Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts combined be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, we're not having too many weddings at our carriage house these days. Oliver's carriage house has once been the place of many a wedding, and we hope that it will be again. But as we come to this Isaiah text, I think of this moment in weddings that tends to happen when a bride or maybe even a groom has a veil. And there's a particular moment when there is an unveiling that the veil that was once cast over the face is lifted and then you can fully see in all of the splendor the person that there resides underneath that covering. Now this is supposed to be, I assume, from its very origins, very symbolic that that which has come between two people now through the holy covenant of marriage will be um, not allowed anything to come between you, that you will be face to face in a true and vulnerable way going forward on the journey. I love that in Isaiah it has this similar feel as we might look and stretch to a time of hope. For the Israelites as they're describing their reality in the middle parts of Isaiah are facing captivity and are in the places in which a foreign entity, a foreign power would have and uh, captured them and enslaved them. And yet, um, they still, in the writings at some point at that time, but also later as they would be envisioning a time in which that would not be true, in which they would be once again returned to their place of, of promise and hopefulness with God, that the time would be like that moment in a wedding when the, the veil is lifted. Here you see in Isaiah the talk of this big feast that would happen, right? It's something that the author of Isaiah is imagining into, that there would be this big moment when everybody would get together again, and it would be even greater than one could have, have imagined about the past. And it is a time in which the shroud, the sheet that would be between God and God's people would somehow be completely done away with. I believe this is a shroud that would also be dividing nations, as it said, dividing peoples from one another, in which we pray that there would be a kinship and a peace and a huge feast that would come about as a result of our oneness together. Can you see why we can get caught up in the spiritual imagination of Isaiah right here? Can you see how much we desperately need this image today? If we think to the shrouds that divide us today, my mind, as it did at Worship Task Group, immediately goes to pandemic. I think of this scary, uh, divisive thing that is claiming human lives and that indeed brings us great fear and worry about our continual time to come. In some ways, it has already robbed us of a lot of the feasting and the hope that comes in gathering with one another. I love the words of Isaiah that, that in the hope that there would be a day in which this shroud, even the pandemic itself, would be lifted and death would be no more. I long for this, friends, for that shroud to be lifted and for us to be seated together. <sighs> Thank you, Scripture. Thank you for having a way of so beautifully engaging with us in our time and place, even as this text was written so long ago. Isn't it unique and beautiful how scripture can do that? That's why we continue to have it as an anchor of Christian faith, as the Hebrew scriptures narrate a peoples that was deepening and trying to be in relationship with God. And we see the lens and life of Jesus who tried to carve out a pathway of love. Now this text is complicated. It itself can feel like a shroud or a sheet that comes between us and divine understanding. And yet, <laughs> I fall in love with it more every year. The individual books that tell stories, narratives of powerful people and people that did not get it right, 
and ways in which the Psalms lyrically invite me into a new understanding of what it be, means to be human. Yes, scripture continues to be a part of our community and of many church communities for that very reason, that this is an ongoing conversation that we hold with the divine. Now, like any conversation that's worth its thought, sometimes there are big disagreements and there are places in this text, I think just like you, that I do not agree with or that I feel are way too violent and don't seek to apply them in my life as I understand it today. Why do we keep picking it up? Why do we have it as one of our disciplines to engage scripture? Because there are tools in here <laughs> that do equip us in our humanity today to better understand what our forebears and generations experienced of God and what they projected onto God that wasn't so very helpful. I think we can use this as a tool of instruction and also a tool of our own re-education about what it means for that shroud to be lifted and for us to be liberated into love. For if we know the truth, we know that many of our brothers and sisters and trans siblings have experienced this text uh, in a way that is harmful or that can feel like a weapon. And it is our job as ongoing searchers and lovers of God's people to um, re-engage text in a way that we can name which does not serve us and which we do not feel speaks the breath of God today. And in connecting with stories that do help us to reimagine the places of our own unshrouding, <laughs> that this text has the ability to be both a weapon, but in the hands of a creative community that is discerning it together, has the opportunity to be a vessel of hope for our time to come. Imagine if the shroud was lifted. Imagine if the shroud was lifted of pandemic. Imagine the shroud of racism or all of the things that would divide us, homophobia, xenophobia, all the things. If that were to be somehow lifted, that is the hope for spiritual community friends. We bring in all of the messages that we've received from our faith life prior and we try to discern what it is that God is calling us to in this moment as individuals of faith and as a community, how we live out the Spirit and participate in the lifting of that shroud. Can you imagine us as a faith community, friends, when that veil goes up? Perhaps there's been times on our journey as a people, KC, when you have experienced that when somehow the veil is lifted and you can just feel the divine flooding your being. Sometimes that has to happen, not just when we're alone. It does happen when we're alone sometimes, but sometimes it takes the unique spiritual formula of community in order to be the witnessing of that moment of the veil being lifted. Now, when I hear you all describe the process of spiritual discernment at KC, you seem to talk about it in this way, that all of a sudden, as people have had the wonderful opportunity to speak their opinions in their heart about where they see the Spirit leading us, that through that process, as each and every person's story and journey is heard and valued, that it's in that process the veil of whatever has divided us or the uncertainty of that moment seems to come up and we get a glimpse of God's kingdom here with us. And it's part of that spiritual motion and movement that we hope guides us into the next pieces of that discernment. That is in the beauty of that revealing when we honor who is around us and what they have to say and how it might inform our journey together, that that's really the moment in which the voice of God has the opportunity to truly speak and to reveal for us the oneness of love. I pray this for our afternoon, friends that founded in scripture today on these images of Isaiah, we can allow these to be an opening for us. That again, as we would gather in spiritual discernment, uh, raising a question about our continued identity, whether to change a name or not change a name, that this would be a moment of the unveiling of the spirit. 
And I pray that even on this medium of Zoom, when the screen itself can sometimes feel like a shroud, that we feel like even through these virtual means, the Spirit can shake and speak to us in revealing ways in which we capture the breadth of God's life. For in Isaiah, we hear that death will be no more. We are a people of life, my friends. We are a people of the resurrection. We are people unafraid to engage in the messiness of scripture and unafraid to sit down with one another and bear each other in love. As we might not always agree, and my goodness, what if we always agreed? <laughs> we don't always agree, but I pray that in the unveiling of the Spirit through spiritual discernment, we could truly hear from one another and move into wherever the Spirit would be calling us. This is the beauty of spiritual community. When we look out and we see all the divisions, especially in our country leading up to the election, can we also be in prayer about the shrouds that divide us, about the sheets that would come between nations, and actively, just as we do within community and honoring each voice and coming to a place of hearing and listening for God, seek to do the same at broader community levels. And what would that mean if we dare to do it? If we dare to summon the energy and dare to engage in the text and, and, and dare to leap into the faithful commitments of which we were called to come, what might that mean? for the broader shroud that comes over our faces to be lifted in love. Let us be about that gift, friends. We'll move shortly after some meditation into a time of community response. These are the questions that we would have before us today, keeping in mind that the spiritual discernment is happening later, and we'll allow that process to happen as it would. In this space, let's consider what your journey has been with scripture. If there's something you'd like to share about that or something you hope for the time to come. And secondly, what does it look like when community holds creative tension together? What does it mean when we hold creative tension together? And what can that mean in terms of the unveiling of God's spirit? These questions will also be on the screen in just a little bit. For now, friends, let it sit in your spirit. May we hold these images of love and ask these questions of us as we learn together.